Hi everyone, my name is Peter Shields and on behalf of AirMet Scientific, I'm pleased to welcome you all to today's webinar. We're fortunate to have Volker Brands, the regional sales manager from NADA Safety Test Solutions in Germany, joining us today to present on 5G, new aspects and peculiarities for EMF testing. The development of 5G technology has seen new challenges arise for the field of safety and radiation monitoring. Today, Volker will go over the basics of 5G technology and the evolution of radiation monitoring in the 5G era. We've also scheduled another webinar as part two of this series with Volker presenting on Thursday the 8th of August, which will be about extrapolation to actual maximum exposure. So I hope some of you will be able to join us for that as well. So over to you, Volker. So uh, as Peter already pointed out, there will be two parts. Today, the part will be um, introduction and, and basics about the new aspects and uh, peculiarities of uh, EMF testing. And then in August 88th, uh, there will be the second part where we will dive a little bit more into the depth with regard to, uh, to calculation and extrapolation methods to maximum EMF exposure. So um, uh, what is the meaning of 5G? It is just short for fifth generation of cellular um, mobile uh, communication system based on, an, on a standard which the association 3GPP uh, is, is defining. Uh, it's also called uh, new radio. New radio is also the differentiator to the name uh, TM. There's also telecommunication management at the telecommunication um, forum uh, defining another standard which is already heavily used in the in the US for four millimeter waves. So basically, there are two standards: the international one and an and, and US American uh, US American flavor. Which we will not, which we will not, will not uh, discuss today. So the history is um, starting with 2G. Then we had uh, third, 3G as the third generation. Currently, most of of the worldwide networks are based on 4G LTE with with two flavors: uh, frequency division and time division, division FDD and TDD. And a new upcoming standard, which is just being now in trial and introduction phase. Is the, is the fifth generation. One of the big differences is the, the downlink data rate you see with starting with around 10 kilo bit per second to uh, uh, 30, 38 for around 400. Then with LTE, theoretical maximum was already around 150 megabyte. And now within a cell, uh, there's a downlink data rate of, of 10 gigabit per second possible. Same big another big difference is, is the latency, which, which came down from some 100 millisecond down to 30 millisecond, which is now in the, in the best case, one millisecond. That means latency is important for services like I, IoT, Industrial Internet of Things, where you have uh, telemetry signals or where you, where you need to have a very, a very fast, quick response between, between actors or detectors. Think, think of, um, um, of, of automotive, of, um, of autonomous driving, yeah, where we cannot allow long latencies, which we have seen in the past, in the past systems. So the application is getting, getting broader and broader. We start with voice, data, SMS in the, in the 2G case. The UMTS already offered access to, uh, to the internet. The, with the 4G, we came into what is called fast mobile internet. And now with the, with the fifth generation, there is a, a vast amount of, uh, of, of functions and applications like um, enabling, as I already said, the, the Internet of Things, car-to-car -car communication, uh, broadcasting, ultra-reliable and low latency, massive machine type of communications. So especially here in Germany, we also see a lot of introduction in industrial areas in, in, in big industrial plants. So it's not, it's, it's not only um, the, the good old telephony, which is based on 5G, but also a lot of, lot of interconnection between, between machines. Uh, the last line maybe is, is, is important that, um, um, that the propagation or the, the, the transmission of, of the signal um, was in the past mainly, mainly SISO, single input, single output. We have seen a few MIMO. So with 2G, there was already um, uh, co- and cross-polarized antennas. 
uh, dipole antennas with um, with 90 degrees in in between their two uh, propagation lanes. With LTE already, few of the latest LTE implementation we have seen already um, beam forming, and uh, with 5G now there's massive MIMO and beam forming will be probably the standard implementation. Having a look in the uh, frequency domain where GSM was still based on single channels, single carriers, they were basically replacing if each, each channel was more or less emulating like a, like a fixed line, a fixed connection, even though wireless, but a point-to-point -point connection uh, in downlink and, and uplink. So even though there was uh, the, the possibility of frequency hopping, um, basically was like that, that every user was, was having its individual channel. Then with 3G, there was the introduction of digital modulation. So in a channel, which was now not only 200 kilohertz, but, but um, 5 megahertz bandwidth, um, in, in this band, there were several channels in, in uplink and, and downlink. So there was a, a multiple use of, of this uh, shared uh, channel. In 4G, the maximum was then increased to 20 megahertz bandwidth and now with the 5g for the for the lower frequency range the bandwidth is um, can go up to 100 megahertz though i've just uh, checked yesterday the the licenses here in germany there are still licenses in the range of, of 5 megahertz 10 megahertz and 20 megahertz so there is no no license for example in germany for 400 megahertz so this is more the the maximum, uh, the maximum possible implementation um, frequency band. Talking a little bit of beam forming and massive MIMO. What is what is that um, exactly? There was already a multiple input, multiple output uh, of antenna arrays in in modern uh, Wi-Fi routers and also even in some uh, 4G installations. But so far, it was only used to either to double transmit a signal, so to increase the quality or to, to double the capacity um, by sending other signals over more than one antenna. But on top of this um, MIMO for diversity, um, there is now also the, the function of, of beam forming, which is being, being added, so that by electronic, um, ele electronic forming of the beams, it is, it is possible to send uh, more uh, power, more energy, uh, to a certain position in, in space uh, to have uh, this kind of sp spatial multiplexing. So that was um, MIMO, which, which already was, was used since the 2G era. As I told you, co- and cross-polarized uh, dipole. Uh, so a lot of individual small antennas, which, which allowed for a better direction of uh, or directional beam forming of, of antennas but if this was all this was all uh, uh, steady and this was all static it was not uh, dynamic so now we want to uh, discuss a little bit the different the different cases of, of possible operational situations with uh, with 5g beam forming one is um, uh, first of all to have no beam forming so that is the good old standard 120 degree antenna segment and uh, on the right hand, you see already um, the horizontal pattern of a segment antenna with beam forming. So if only two user equipments are active, then you have two very selective, selective beams, um, which are only um, supplying um, RF power to these two user equipments. Um, uh, then we need to um, differentiate to, di to different cases. There is the, the synchronization of signal signalization signals, and, and it's possible, for example, to have this in a, in, a, in a scanning mode, so in a dynamic mode, so that in, in each 120 degree sector, um, the, uh, the signalization signal is, is, is scanning, mainly for detection communication with the mobile phones, and to um, to make sure that they're getting getting synchronized, that they detect the self, um, and so on. At the same time, you can have fixed uh, traffic signal on the right hand. So the so the blue beams show the the user equipment with the with the uplink and um, and downlink um, 
to get the optimum uh, connectivity. So there are two different beam formings uh, which we need to keep in mind. There is a horizontal scanning, so we are looking now from the top on the on, on the tower on, on, on the rooftop, and we have the the vertical scanning. So we are looking so we are looking on the on the building on the right hand. <coughs> Excuse me, and you see that there is also the, the vertical scanning component. So we have a beam forming in in in, in two in two directions and two in two dimensions. And now we need to again um, separate different different cases. There can be the the good old case that signalization and tracking is without beam forming. So that is that was the case in 2G, 3G, majority of 4G installations. Now with um, with UMTS, it's it's possible to have um, to have signalization without beam forming. So the signal. So the synchronization signals are being transmitted broadly, but uh, the traffic is 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 with the beam forming option, and or the most um, the, the most enhanced, the most sophistic, sophisticated way of uh, communication is uh, signalization with beam forming and traffic with beam forming. So the latter case or the case three on the on the right hand of the of the slide. It could most likely be the the, the, the standard case um, after all um, um, radio links all radio stations have been being upgraded to the to the latest to the latest and greatest uh, the software and hardware and and hardware functions we will see a lot of um, other installations like the, the the first one and the second one for 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 the upcoming time, um, but the, uh, the, the the target is to to make the best use out of the technology, and that would be the pretty much the situation on the, on the right hand of the slide. Coming now to um, to the subject of NARDA of um, testing, what does that mean for for measurement of uh, electromagnetic fields? So first of all, start with the personal protection at at work at, at the workplace. So here, the uh, testers like the, the, the good old NADA Redman or the new latest the NADA Redman 2 or the NADA Alert S3 or the, the NBM, the, the broadband meter, which is all being manufactured here at our German facilities. Modulation, crest factor and signal shape are not critical to those, to those uh, instruments, so, so they will give you um, the right and the correct test result uh, wherever you are and uh, wherever you are positioned and, and whenever you are you're measuring. S5G will also use uh, frequencies above uh, 24 gigahertz uh, with really relevant output power. We of course need to focus now on models which are not uh, limited to, to, to frequencies of 6 or 8 gigahertz which, which was in the past sufficient. But if you want to have a future proof solution, then, then of course you should uh, make sure uh, that you acquire uh, respective models which, which, which have uh, frequencies minimum up to, up to 30, 40, better 60 gigahertz, so, so that your investment is uh, future proof. As the beam can change its directions, of course, necessary that the personal monitor should always be worn on the body. Because only if it's worn on the on the body here, the, the, the new model Redman 2, um, you can make sure that um, body reflection is is, is addressed in a, in a correct manner, in, in a correct manner uh, by help the um, of the reflective uh, of, of the attenuation foam, which which we are using in the um, uh, fixture of of the Redman at on your body. Definition of safety. Safety zones is of course still an, um, an ongoing ongoing task. So um, there are basically uh, three three ways to do this. You can do a rough estimation by calculation. So you start with the EIRP, so with the uh, emitted um, isotropic radiated power. You, you use some approximations and calculations with the with, with the antennas. Uh, but that is uh, quite rough because it's not it's not um, taking into con consideration the real situation on a on a on a tower on a rooftop with the path propagations with the reflections and so on. More precise is a is a simulation by a respective software which we also 
selling the, the, the electromagnetic field calculation software uh, 400 uh, TC. Here's a little, little picture which allows a more, uh, more realistic uh, simulation. So basically it's, it's, it's the solution of the uh, Maxwell equation. So it's a, it's a true, it's, it's a correct mathematical calculation and approximation of the reality. And last but not least, measurements are giving, uh, giving ultimately the, the, the only true and only real um, information about the, the exposure at a, at a certain time and at a certain uh, position. And for this measurement, there is an extrapolation possible to, to actual maximum, where NADA has uh, proposed uh, two measurement procedures uh, based on the selective radiation meter, the SRM3006. So, so there are two measurements. Uh, one measurement is, is, is in frequency and time domain. We will touch that uh, briefly today and we will discuss this more into detail on part two of that presentation on August. So uh, there are two possibilities to do an ex extrapolation. One is uh, based in frequency and time domain. Frequency domain, the measurement in time domain, you do some checks. So for that, it's necessary to have the scope mode that is an oscilloscopic mode. Uh, technically, it's, it's IQ streaming in, in, in real time. It's, it's a level meter in, in time domain. So a demodulation of the baseband, you see the whole baseband, like on an oscilloscope, demodulated on a spectrum analyzer to check the uplink and downlink to see if there is any um, effects of, of mobile phones in the, in the uplink, which would uh, corrupt the, um, the test result in the, in the downlink. And the second, the second method is a, a code selective measure method, which we, which we are proposing. The first one is, is available right now. Uh, the second one is not available as per today because the uh, standardization has not been finished so far. Mainly, mainly IEC is working on that. Um, but when the, um, when the standardization is being finalized, then, then we will uh, um, very fast look into, into, a, into a solution. Let's talk about solutions, what, what we are planning uh, for, for next year is to have a down converter uh, with the SRM3006. That means a kind of um, horn receiving antenna, which will be uh, addressing the higher frequency range of 5G. And um, so in that antenna will be, will be a down converter so that the millimeter wave frequency range will be down converted to the, to the uh, down to the six gigahertz range with, which um, SRM3006 can, can handle. And uh, by help of the, of the antenna control um, interface, this down converter and this antenna, this active antenna down converter will be, will be powered by the, by the SRM. And uh, by the antenna control also the, the, the frequency range will be correspondingly correctly being shown in the, in the SRM 3006. So that is, that is on the roadmap. And secondly, on the roadmap, we are we're just discussing now the demodulation method for, for 5G, so that you really can also extrapolate to the actual maximum in, in complex situations where, where you have been forming for, for the synchronization signalization part and where you have been forming for the, for, the, uh, for the user channels. To measure the current exposure, so not, the, not, 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 not doing the approximation to the, to the maximum, to measure the current exposure and, and in a lot of trials and pilots now, you can, you can set the system also to maximum exposure. So in that case, you will have the special situation that the current exposure is the maximum exposure. There are the, um, the NBM uh, broadband um, test equipment is available, which you see here on the, on the picture on the right hand. The, uh, the latest probes uh, cover signals up to, up to 90 gigahertz. So, so in that respect, um, um, nearly all of, of, of the 5G implementation where you can think of are being, being included. The uh, NADA broadband meter is able to measure the current field strength and presents the results either or in volt per meters, um, milliwatt or square centimeters, or directly in percentage of, of the standard of the, of the limit curves. The selective radiation meter 3006 can perform, as the name says, selective measurements up to six gigahertz, 
and can also differentiate and distinguish between the different services and as I already pointed out we are foreseeing extensions to frequency above 24 gigahertz. For um, integration over frequency or what is called safety evaluation method it's it's possible um, even to to capture the power in in services which are broader than 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 the 20 megahertz uh, resolution bandwidth which uh, the spectrum analyzer is offering so so what you're doing even even though you use the resolution bandwidth of 20 megahertz it, it is possible to um, to scan over over wider bandwidth for example um, 100 megahertz and um, you define the, the lower frequency, 3.5 gigahertz, the upper frequency, 3.6 gigahertz. So now you're sweeping with the resolution bandwidth of 20 megahertz. Uh, with um, Technically, these are FFT scans with overlapping fast Fourier transform windows. With overlapping, you, you, you scan through, or in the past it was sweeping in the, in the analog world where we had analog test and um, test um, measurement equipment now it's, it's scanning it's digitally so you scan or sweep over the 100 megahertz with 20 megahertz and measure the current exposure so um, you have an, you you define this table on your PC upload it in the spectrum analyzer and then you see the result um, here it's a, it's a condensed view so you can also have a detailed view and uh, in the index one, you have the 5G service with the instantaneous uh, value of uh, 8 millivolts per meters, the maximum of 12 millivolts per meters, and the average of 9 millivolts per meters. You can also see that, with, with, take a look on that um, with all the adjacent uh, services, like um, in Germany, we have, for example, GSM a railway, um, so the, the 2G flavor for the, for the railways. Um, you can have decked phones in, in your vicinity. You have UMTS TDD, UMTS FDD. Maybe you have a Wi-Fi. You, you have the in industry and science medicine band. So whatever signals in the non-licensed band. And then the, the 5G, the new services here. And then the instrument will give you the max value, the average value, um, other contributors, which are which are so, there's a kind of broadband measurement where you check for the for the gaps in the bands, which are not con, uh, contained in the in the in the upper the upper list here, and then you get a you get a total. And as I already explained before, you can have the presentation here in volt per meters in field strength or in power density in watts, or you can have it directly in percentage of um, of the limit. Which you which you have selected, for example, the the I the ECNIF, the IN, CRNP value. Another approach to um, assess the um, exposure at uh, in the vicinity of, of uh, towers and uh, transmitter stations is a 24 by 7 measurement. Of course, measurement with the Redman, the NBN, the SRM is of course only. Uh, the spot measurement in time, but if you are interested in, in 24 by 7, so continuous continuous measurement for that application, uh, we are providing area monitor probes. We have we have two models: the broadband probe, the area monitor B, and the and the selective one, the area monitor S. And here we can again measure up to up to 40 gigahertz broadband. So that is good if you want to have a, a complete assessment of, of, of all signals. Of course, as a broadband measurement, you will also have, of course, um, broadcast measurements or radar signals in the, of the, in the vicinity of a tower included in this, in this test results. Or we also have this, this um, selective one up to six gigahertz. And with this one, of course, you can, you can select only, only the band for the 5G installation and uh, you only analyze this service uh, on its own. In, in pretty quite a lot of countries, these uh, autonomous test stations have been brought out. So, so they are, as you see here, they are solar powered and they come with a 
or the typically with a 3G modem. Other means of, of um, data transfer are also possible, RS-232 or via the, the, the either via Ethernet. And they uh, supply, um, the, they load up the test results on a database. And if this is being um, offered to the public, as in many countries like in Italy, in, in this, this, this example is uh, the National Observatory of Electromagnetic Fields in, in Greece from the Greek Atomic Energy Commission, which is the, the, the radiation uh, department for ionized and non-ionized radiation in Athens, in Greece. So, so here are hundreds of these stations brought out over the whole country, and um, every citizen can can look up what is the uh, what is the exposure over the last hours, the last months, the last weeks. Even you can have a look up first what is the exposure at a at a kindergarten where your children are, or what is the exposure in an elderly home where your parents are. So this is being uh, installed in, in in quite some countries, especially also in Eastern. In Eastern Europe, in, in Serbia, in South of Europe, in, in Italy, there are quite some uh, governments which have brought out this uh, this monitoring. So, so like you monitor um, other environmental things like dust or like uh, ozone in the in the atmosphere, uh, pe people can see also the the electro smog, the the pollution or uh, load for for humans. Coming to the last to the last slides of, of the today's presentation, and, um, and that is already slowly leading into the into the next part of, of this presentation is uh, the environmental measurement with the possibility to to um, calculate the, the actual the actual maximum exposure. So as the transmitted power of 5G and our base station depends strongly on the current traffic load and the user behavior what we discussed before on the vertical and horizontal uh, beams, of course. That means it takes a little bit more of duration and a little bit more of efforts to uh, to correctly measure this. Yeah. So in, it means in practice that the current exposure method within a specific observation time could be much lower than the actual maximum exposure. For that, many regulators enforce the, the extrapolation to maximum load as, as the uh, measurement of choice and to compare this result uh, versus international or national uh, or local local limits so in europe we, we have some we have some municipality municipalities which have their own limits like the city of brussels or also nearby here uh, the city the city of, of tübingen having even their, their their city limits the municipal municipal limits and uh, um, this check can be assured that these limits being being um, being fulfilled and, and not exceeded um, with the uh, maximum exposure calculation. Second last slide. Today, NASA started to discuss. NASA is proposing two methods to extrapolate to actual maximum exposure for the SRM 3006. Both these measure, uh, methods are based on, on measurement of signal components inside the uh, signalization or synchronization signal blocks which are independent um, uh, from or independent of the current load of the base station. So um, this is like uh, we had in, in, in 2G um, a beacon or, or a pilot. So signal where you where you know the power which you can use to, to calculate and extrapolate to 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 the maximum of of the field strength in the in the whole signal. With, um, with 3G, 4G, 5G is more complex because it is a, it is a quite a complex modulation scheme. So either or you need to demodulate, um, that is the second method, or you um, have a look in the in the in the frequency domain, uh, check for this for this signal resource block, and out of this signal resource block you you identify this this maximum. It is still easy now in, in, in the cases of trials and pilots where you where you don't have a, so many user equipment in place and where you, you still um, see very clearly what is what is the maximum what, what is the maximum signal in, in the in the frequency band. But it will be um, quite more complex if if you do measurements than in a couple of years. 
uh, where you can expect um, then uh, thousands of, of mobile phones or, or internet uh, IoT components um, which are transmitting and, and, and receiving. Again, both methods are based on measurement of signal components inside the signalization block, being independent from the current load of the base station. This measurement result can be used then to, to extrapolate to the actual maximum exposure. The first method is based on frequency selective measurement and a check in time domain. So you, you use both, you use the, 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 the spectrum analysis function of a, of a radiation meter and you use the level meter and the oscilloscopic presentation to, to, to just have a, a logical check that you don't have too much uh, of, of uplinks. Uh, means uh, mobile phones, for example, on the rooftop itself, which would uh, corrupt the test result. First method, based on frequency selective measurement, is already being established for, for LTE signals. So there was already an ISC, an ISC recommendation um, stipulating this measurement. And the second method is, is called uh, demodulation-based extrapolation. So we already had that in the SRM for many years for, for 3G. We have that for, for quite some time now for 4G, for, for both flavors of 4G, the, the TDD and the FTD, the time domain and the, 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 the time division and the frequency division uh, method of, of 4G LTE. And the May edition of the um, Journal of, of Health Physics, um, my colleague uh, Helmut Keller, um, from our R&D department, he submitted a proposal and, uh, and he described a method for uh, 5G demodulation and uh, decode-based uh, calculation of or measurement of these um, signals in the, sig in, in the signalization part, the primary and the secondary sync signal, and to use this for um, calculation to maximum exposure. If you want to have a look already on that on that paper, it's it's publicly available here. Airmed will uh, submit this part of my presentation to to all of you, and the, the the hyperlink to that publication is is included. More I will tell you in the second part of um, of this three uh, G uh, this five G um, lecture on. August, at same same place, same time. And as this method is is not being rectified by by the respect by the respective standardization bodies, which is namely um, uh, IEC and or um, ITUT, as long as the, the approval is 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 pending, of course, we will not start with the with the implementation uh, because that of course costs um, quite some. Um, Quite some software, soft software design power. So we are still waiting for the for the finalization of, of that met method, and then uh, we also planning to put that on the on the roadmap of SRM as we have already started now with the, with the first uh, check for for the millimeter wave application with, with SRM 3006. Okay, over to to Peter. Over to Melbourne from Stuttgart to Melbourne. <laughs> Thank, thanks, Volker. Um, yeah, we, we have got a few questions here. The first question, Volker, is what frequencies does Radman 2 test up to? Yeah, we have two. For the Radman 2, we have we have two versions. Um, um, the uh, the uh, Radman LT, the, the, the light version, and then we have the Radman 2 XT, the extended version. Um, it's early in the morning, if I remember correctly, the LT version goes up to 6 or 8 gigahertz. The yes, uh, correct meter, I'm wrong, Peter. Yeah. Eight. It's 8, eight huh? and the XT version uh, goes up to uh, 60, 60 gigahertz. Yeah. And uh, then for those special cases where you have, where you have uh, radar signals, which are, which are even, even higher than that, um, then we have um, um, we also have the, um, the the NAD alert, which is using a different uh, different sensor technology. It's using a TC elements, thermocouple elements, um, and they can can even uh, um, go and pick up signals up to up to 100 gigahertz. 
uh, and the NBM, um, the, 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 the latest uh, probe um, is the 90 gigahertz probe, which is again using the same uh, sensor like Redman, which is uh, dipole, dipole diodes. Yeah, and uh, this uh, NBM can reach up to, to 90 gigahertz. Thanks, Dan. Another, another question, Volker, fairly broad, is 5G safe? Is 5G safe? That is a big question. <laughs> um, 5G is safe and unsafe as, as all the other technologies, and, and, and it's pretty much depending, depending on, the, on, on the situation. Uh, first of all, um, it's, it's, it's all about distance. Uh, the, the closer you come to any antenna, the, the unsafer uh, the situation uh, will be. Um, I've seen, um, I've seen in, in, in Scandinavia, I've seen a few implementations where you have uh, uh, one kilowatt of power for, for, for a 5G station, which is, which is pretty much. And um, if, there is, um, if, if, if there are constant beams on you and, and, and do a long, a long download, then, um, then um, of course the, the exposure is, is, is much higher than, than if you are in, so just in broadband beams and signalization and synchronization beams. I think the good thing about this, this, this beam forming is um, the, the user has it more now in, in, in its hands. Um, if you want to be 100% safe, then don't use uh, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G mobile phones. And, and, and with, the, with the 5G, it's, it's even the way that those who are heavy users will have more exposure. Um, those who are using sporadically or not using 5G at all will, will, will have much less exposure. Um, so some colleagues already said that it's more democratic now, <laughs> the, the 5G than, 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 than the other flavors where, where you have a constant, uh, a constant electro smog noise um, around you. Um, so safe and unsafe, um, we from, 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 from testing, we can only tell you um, what, is, what is the level of, of exposure. The question safe, unsafe, of course, also includes uh, people, people with other professional backgrounds like, like um, uh, medical people, uh, physicians, and not necessarily uh, engineers only. So is it safer, is it unsafer? Um, of course, the general tendency is that we have more and more signals um, uh, in the ether. We have um, the, the frequency spectrum are getting more and more dense, but, but it's not only 5G, it is, it is also uh, um, uplinks and downlinks uh, for, 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 for satellites. It's, it's also more broadcast signals uh, in Germany. We, we, we have now, for example, the good old uh, FM radio in parallel with the with the DAB plus. So so the 100 megahertz band is full and crowded. The 200 megahertz band, the digital um, um, terrestrial radio is crowded. Um, we have uh, TV from from many sources, not only cable TV um, uh, and satellite TV, but also DVB-T. So also 700 megahertz is crowded. We have Tetra. Uh, the, the police, the police communication, which is around 400 megahertz, also being crowded. We have now 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G all all in parallel. Um, so um, I think it's necessary that uh, organizations like like uh, the United Nations, with, with the World World Health Organization, and and with the sub organization called called ICNIRB or ICR and NAPD, are looking into that and and looking not only for the short-term effects which we pretty much know the, the heat the heat effect with radar it's more complex because in radar you you have these these very short pulses and the very short signals with a, with a vast amount of of am, am, amplitude but also that is being um, described in, 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 in ICNIR. Um, you have the low frequency sensoric effects on 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 bodies yeah in induced currents in, in, in the body, so these are these three, these three effects which are which are known, but these are all short term effects, and the the analysis um, and the checking of, of of what is happening with the long term effects is, is still ongoing. 
So future will tell us this probably, of course, not what, what you want to hear. Uh, but from, from from my point of view, um, I cannot tell you what is. I, I think it's not a black and white, safe or unsafe. It's more like like nut nut nutrition and like sports. <laughs> I think it's a combination of of all. If you if you if you eat more healthy food and do more sports, it's it's uh, the likelihood or the probability that you live longer and better is there. But for individuals. Uh, the answer can 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 also be be quite negative. Uh, despite of that, you can have serious uh, illnesses, e e even if you if, if you if you look for that and strive for a, for for a good um, balance in in life. So I think it's same with the with the electro smog. Uh, it's it's um it's the combination of all which um, may lead to to more risk and less risk in life. You know. But that is just uh, the answer of a, of a poor engineer. And as I told you. Physicians and medical guys are, are also required to uh, to answer that complex question. Okay. Thanks, Volker. I've got a, <clears throat> got a few more questions here. Can the NBN display measurements in microwatts per meter squared? Can the NBM display results in power density? Is that the question? In microwatts per meter squared. Yeah, we have this, you know, Peter. We we, we have this this per, perimeter, this glider, where we can uh, compute. But of course, you can also do this by calculation. Um, so of course, you can you can calculate. I think I think we don't have we, we don't have all these these um, these these units there. But of course, you you can commute the one into the into the other. Yeah. So as long as power versus Power versus uh, region, uh, area, no matter if it's millimeter, micrometer square, um, you, you can calculate and compute the one in, in, into the other. Yeah. So, so basically, what these testers are measuring is um, what they measure is for the higher frequencies, typically uh, uh, volt per meters. Um, and then in the, in the, in the, in the far field, um, you can compute this into 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 amps per meters. You can compute this into power density. So basically, you have volt per meters, um, amps per meters, um, and you have watts per per, per square meter. Um, this could be, of course, calculated from milli, micro, nano watts, and then to whatever square meter, square feet. Um, yeah. The nano or centimeters to the square and so on. Yeah. Um, have a look at the data sheet. In the data sheet, we 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 give you a list of what is directly selectable and accessible. The others needs to be calculated then by 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 hand. Or we have this this glider, this perimeter, where you can calculate from from one dimension to the other dimension. Yeah, I've got some of those. So if someone wants one, I can I can ask them. Got a few, few um, questions on the SRM three thousand and six. So, what's the expected time frame for the RF down converter for the SRM three thousand and six? And I suppose as part of that, there's also a, yeah, I can only give you, yeah, I can only give you a rough, a rough time frame. It could be not before six months, and I would not expect later than eighteen months. Um, so in that, in yeah. that, we're lucky in six months, half a year. Uh, if 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 uh, we are struggling with with some whatever kind of, of hurdles, they can could be technical, they could be commercial. That, that the solutions are too expensive uh, for the market. So maybe then we need to have a second or third try and try other suppliers for for the down converters. But but pretty much my personal expectation, but I, but I cannot. I'm, I'm, I'm not the only guy, but I'm not the guy who's responsible for all roadmaps. I would pretty much think in the range of, of six months to maximum 18 months from today, then we have this down converter. And uh, the same answer I would also, uh, would also provide you for the, for the, for the uh, decoding for, for 5G, uh, for the, for the uh, frequency range one, for the lower frequency range. But of course, this, um, uh, 
the trigger will be the finalization of the standardization so that the standard is uh, is fixed and um, uh, from that point we can and, and then of course we need to have a look um, for availability of our, of our um, software development team that they're not working that they finish the work on, on other jobs yeah, and then they can start with the implementation of, 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 of that it will be uh, will be an implementation which is um, yeah we'll, we'll also discuss this a little bit more on the on the second part of the of the go more into detail with the second part of the lecture of implementation may, may look like yeah yeah okay now there's a couple of other you know, similar sort of questions so will the <clears throat> will these options the down converter and the um demodulation option be compatible compatible with the current SRM 3006? Yes, yes, that is of course yeah. the design target, yeah, that it's not necessary to, to, to buy other hardware than the down converter and that the, the decoding of course is, is still running with the, with the existing, with the existing SRM 3006, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, another question, are there additional protection PPE for people taking measurements? Um, additional protection in, in which yeah, way? Yeah, personal protective equipment for um, people actually taking measurements. I think the best protection is the Redman 2, the XT version. Yeah. And that's the best. It's not a protection, but it's an alarming device which, which, which gives you well in advance and information about, about, about the radiation situation at your at your location the the redman 2 is not only offering um, to go up to 60 gigahertz it also has a fast mode so instead of of the integration um to the integration time i think it's uh, it's, it's one second it can go down to 30 chords correct me if i'm wrong yeah no that's right one second i think and then you can switch it to to fast uh, I think which is 30 milliseconds, if I remember correctly. So that even if, if you're in the vicinity of, of radar stations, so in, in Europe we have a few, a few towers where you, where you have a combination of uh, DAB plus, we have a combination at the same tower, you, you have weather radar stations. So um, that, that can be the case, that you're being even alarmed for that. Mm. The, 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 another, another, Measure I can could think of is of course uh, wearing um, protection uh, suits. There are protection suits with the, with, the, with the metal grid on on your body, which is which is which is reducing by whatever 10 dB plus minus 10 dB. It is it is reduce, uh, reducing the the exposure. Um, uh, this is then a real protection device because not only alarm alarming is effective. Uh, protecting you, uh, but then of course it gets complex with the reading of your of your of your alarm device. You need to wear it then outside. There's some the, the, the reflection is probably more more complex with this metal grid than the reflection from the body. So then it becomes more more complex. What um, how to interpret the reading of of of, of your red man in that case? Thanks. Now I think this is the last one. We'll see if Got I'm not sure whether you'd be, how you'd be able to answer this one, but is it true that 5G will penetrate through the human body and is currently a weapon used by the US military? Uh, second part of the question I'm not aware of. <laughs> but, but who knows? Uh, first part of the question was if it's if the radiation is passing through the body, mm. yeah, that's, that's of course the case because people behind your body still can use mobile phones. Huh? So, so radiation, of course, is passing is passing through the body. Um, what I know, if if you go back to the to the to the to the defense applications, there are of course defense applications which are using which are using radiation radiation as a as, as a weapon yeah if you if, if you use uh, extremely extremely high power signals 
and mm -hmm. and you you pulse them in the, in the right way. Um, but then of course there's a probability if if whatever vehicles flying. Uh, Floating vehicles or whatever kind of vehicles, flying vehicles or driving vehicles um, can be can be stopped because they all have a lot of electronics. And if you destroy this electronics by an extreme strong pulse, um, um, but then of course you can bring helicopters down and um, um, or, or, or air fighters down. Um, so this this these um, um, developments are there, but but here you you really talk about much much higher electromagnetic fields than, than which is used in, in telecommunication. But it's like like with all things in in, in life, if you if you take it to extreme, then, then um, everything like like medicine or, or nutrition, everything of course can become can become a weapon if you if, if you if you mis, if you misuse it. And, and, Increase yeah. concentration, things like that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Volker. I think we better wrap it up there. Um, okay. Thanks everyone for attending today. If you have any further questions on the NADA product range or anything that was discussed today, please feel free to contact uh, any of your AirMet representatives. As I've already mentioned, we've scheduled another web webinar, part two of this series, that will be presented by Volker on Thursday, the 8th of August at the same time, which is more about measurements, extrapolation to actual maximum exposure. So I hope any of you who are interested in that topic will join us. And finally, I'd just like to thank Volker for your time today. Thanks for your time. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, have a good day. You too.